It is the work of beauty and precision. Each hour, each minute, each second is arrived at with absolute accuracy. It is composed of almost a thousand parts. Springs and gears, levers, wheels, jewels, glass. On the back are engraved the initials of the owner, J.W.B. This is the watch of a murderer. It is now 20 past two. He will kill at 10.17 tonight. What is it? What's wrong? It's nothing. Bad dream, that's all. Tell Mr. Hay to come in here, please. I told you I shouldn't take a nap after lunch. Not when I've stuffed myself with all that apple pie. What did you dream? Hmm? Half the day gone. Tell me. Oh, Mother. What did you dream? Well, I dreamt the, uh, I dreamt the South won the war. And they, uh, put me on exhibition in a little cage. Only nobody would pay a nickel to come see me. Hey, I mean it. So I said, oh, come. Good afternoon, Mr. President. 
Not much left of the afternoon, good or bad. You should awaken me. Well, sir, you seem so tired. How many hot and hungry politicians have we today? Speaker Kofo is waiting and Congressman Cole of California. Oh. Well, look at Did you ever see such happiness? Why, they're busting with it. Mary? Today, for the first time in four years, the war is spoken of in the past tense. Explain to you. Send him in. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Hay. Um, I want you to send a message to the vice president. I want him to drop in today. Today? Anything wrong with that? Why, well, you have so much to do, sir. Wouldn't tomorrow be... No. It must be today. Yes, sir. Oh, and, uh, hey, uh, don't forget that Mrs. Lincoln and I are going to the theater tonight. No appointments after dinner. Yes, sir. Oh, Mary, please be happy. It's such a wonderful day. Please don't spoil it. Mary... Mary, please be happy. You know what we're going to do? I mean, when I'm finished here and they send us back, and we're going to Europe like two wide-eyed young tourists. Then back home to Springfield. See if anybody needs a good lawyer. And if they don't, that's just too bad. What's so awful about a few acres along the Sangamon? Spending our days on our front porch, rocking back and forth, swapping mosquitoes. What did you dream? Stop it. Mary, will you stop it? Will you stop hounding me? Even today you can't... I'm sorry, Mother. But when I'm tired, you shouldn't badger me like that. Abe. I want to know. Because... Because you're a busybody wife. Trust me right around your little finger. And you let me keep my dreams to myself. Because I'm so afraid. Day to day, I've had the strangest feeling. I can't explain it. No, Mother. I had the same feeling once before. The day I Willie died. Oh, Mary. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. By tomorrow, you'll see it'll be all forgotten. Minutes after six. It is four hours and ten minutes before the murder. The president is just finishing his evening meal. He bites into a pear and jokes with his boys. The sun has reached the horizon and night comes swiftly. And with it, an inexplicable knowledge of what is to be moves everywhere. In North Carolina, in a Union Army camp, a barber suddenly stops shaving a soldier. His hand trembles and he murmurs, something bad is happening to Mr. Lincoln. In southern Illinois, an old lady who helped to raise Lincoln burst into tears without knowing why. In the living quarters and editorial office of the Elgin Eagle in eastern Pennsylvania, something absolutely unexplainable is happening. He's not there. Where is he? He's in the print shop. What's he doing there? From the sounds of things, he's working. Doesn't he know that a stroke is nothing to be treated lightly? 
Oh, I told him that, but he locked the door. Maybe he's had another attack. Or to close the drugstore to go to a funeral? And the doc told you to... Who told you that? Less than three hours away. Abe Lincoln is just leaving the White House for Ford's theater. A guard very close to him calls, Good night, Mr. President. After pausing a moment, Lincoln replies, Goodbye. 830 miles from Washington, in the vicarage at the First Congregational Church, the minister, Jonathan Strum, is resting after a long day church. Did they feel any better? Oh, they will never feel any better. Oh, standing 12 hours on that hard cement floor. When do you have any feet left at all? Jesus walked barefoot the 14 stations to Calvary this day, so let's not pity me too much. Ah, uh, that feels better. Well, I'm thankful Good Friday only comes once a year. <laughs> now, read me the sergeant's letter all over again. From the very beginning? From the very first word. He won't be a sergeant very much longer. We must be properly respectful of him when he comes home. That is, for a few days. Dear folks, it sure is beginning to look like peace, and everybody's pretty darn excited. <laughs> His spelling has to be seen to be believed. The word now is... Why is that bell ringing? What, what in the world? What? Noah must be out of his mind. That's the passing bell for the dead. He must be drunk again. No, Ellen. I don't care how long he's been sexed into this church. You just can't let him do these things. Pastor? How did our bell start ringing? Well, we thought it was you. Why would I be ringing the death bell? I bet some children broke into the tower again. I told you to keep it locked. Oh, well, I do, sir. I checked it just a little while ago. Stop them, John. It sounds so awful. That Peterson boy again. He's always at the mischief of a rascal. The leader of the boy. How do you suppose those kids got in there? It's me. It must have been the wind. What wind, Pastor? in the presidential box at Ford's Theater. The play is more than half over. John Wilkes Booth walks calmly through the lobby, nods to the ticket seller, listens to the audience laughing at the simple humor of our American cousin. He starts up the flight of wooden stairs. Lincoln, at ease, amused by the play, reaches for his wife's hand. Booth's hand closes around the stock of a brass pistol. Twelve minutes. Past ten. Directly across from the theater, in a two-story wooden house at 453 10th Street, a soldier angrily exits his rented room. Hey, landlord. Landlord! 
Yes? What kind of place are you running here, anyway? When I rented that room, I told you I wanted peace and quiet. Well, seems to me it was peaceful and quiet until now. Well, how about all this weeping and wailing? Wailing? That sounds like the end of the world or something. I got enough troubles of my own without being kept awake by somebody else's. What are you talking about? Are you deaf? Can't you hear it? Sounds worse than a field hospital. Well, I guess you heard the people passing in the street. It's a great night in Washington. Well, it didn't sound... It sounded like crying. I don't hear nothing now. Maybe you'd fallen asleep. Maybe it was a dream. I wasn't asleep. It sounded funny. There was nights in the hospital and I went out of my head and heard lots of noises, but this was different. I don't hear no sobbing now. No. You probably have dozed off without knowing it. It's happened to me lots of times. Well, I didn't. Well, maybe I did. I'm sorry I yelled at you. Well, good night. Good night, soldier. Now. Oh, that room ain't for me. Well, you won't find another bed in this city, not tonight. Well, then I'll sleep in the park. Well, here, I'll give you your money back. I don't want to keep it, not if you're not going to keep the room. Well, you think I'm going to stay in any room with a sobbing and weeping and wailing and crying all night long? I need a room for the bed. What is it? The president. He's been shot. He's dying. Well, come on, man. Where? Hey, I said where. I've got a room at the end of the hall. In here. The great heart of Abraham Lincoln will cease to beat at 22 minutes and 10 seconds past 7 a.m. And so the strangest and saddest hours in American history come to an end. And of these hours, what is truth and what is legend? Who can know? Certainly it was a time filled with portent with dreams of warning, precognition, premonition, all unheeded, as though a power beyond man's knowing decreed that nothing would deflect that bullet from its course. Abraham Lincoln's favorite lines were from Shakespeare. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. Treason has done its worst, not steel nor poison. Malice domestic, foreign levy, nothing can touch him further. 